In our first lecture about the basic derivative techniques, I mentioned something called the Magnificent Seven. We actually only went over six of those, and we're getting ready to do the seventh, which is called the Chain Rule. The Chain Rule requires your knowledge of the first six. So if you have not taken the opportunity to go and learn how to take the derivative of the um, different pieces of the first six basic techniques, I do encourage you to do that. Um, so now, you know, assuming that you have um, that basic knowledge, we're going to take a look at the chain rule. And the chain rule kind of deals with the fact that we might have a big function, that we might have a big function f, and inside of f, we might have another function g, and even inside of g, we might have another function h, and so on and so on. In other words, one function is embedded into another function. The idea behind the chain rule is that by the end of the day, we have to have taken the derivative of every function. So we're going to have to make sure at some point we took the derivative of f, the derivative of g, and the derivative of h. The second thing it stems on is you can only do one derivative at a time. So if I'm taking the derivative of, a, of f, then I can't take the derivative of g. During that same time, I'm going to have to do it um, at the end. And the other thing that it stems on is you start from the outside and work in, which is a little opposite of, if you think back to order of operations when you had parentheses, you worked on the inside and then worked your way out. With the chain rule with derivatives, you start on the outside and work your way in. And so here I have y equals uv of x, which is really just you have a big function u, and inside of it you have a little function v. Um, the x just means that's the variable v of x, like f of x. I'm going to avoid writing that right now just so that we don't think it's another function. So if I have the function I just described earlier where I have a function f, and inside of that I have a function g, and inside of that I have a function h, and inside of that I could have a function i, then here's what the derivative looks like. Is first, you take the derivative of the outside one, but you can only do one at a time, so you leave everything else inside alone. So you take the derivative of f, leaving everything else inside alone. Then, now we're ready, we've taken the derivative of f, so now we're ready to take the derivative of g, but we have to leave h alone. So we've taken the derivative of f, leaving g and h alone. We're going to take the derivative of g, leaving h alone, and now we're ready to take the derivative of h. And this keeps going and going and going. So you, you start on the outside and work your way in so that you um, take the derivative of every function and then you uh, eventually multiply together all of those derivatives. So let's take a look at this example and I'm going to set it up using the colors that we have to try to help us. The first function we really have is 4 times something cubed. And so we know how to take the derivative of something cubed. Okay? I don't even know that I should write what goes in that parentheses, but technically what's in that parentheses is our other function, which is 3x squared minus 5 but maybe it would have been a good thing to leave that out because right now we are taking the derivative of the blue 
To take the derivative of the blue, we're just going to use the power rule. We're going to bring the 3 down and multiply it to the 4, and we're going to decrease our power by 1. So we have now taken the derivative of the blue. We are leaving the red alone, so that would be 3x squared minus 5. Now, we have not taken the derivative of the red. So now we're going to multiply by the derivative of the red. And the derivative of the red is 6x because the derivative of 3x squared is 6x to the first. The derivative of 5 is 0. So we've taken the derivative of the blue. We've taken the derivative of the red. There's no other colors to take the derivative of. We've taken the derivative of everything in the problem, and so now we're ready to clean it up. The 12 and the 6x can multiply to give me 72x, 3x squared minus 5 squared. And so that is the chain rule. Um, let me do another example with you that maybe is a little more complicated. But that's the idea of it, is you say, okay, the first thing I have is this power, it's 4 something to the third. So how do I take the derivative of the blue? Then I take the derivative of the red. All right, this example is probably about as bad as they get. Uh, it still only has maybe two parts, but um, it's a little bit more uh, involved. It does involve a cubed root, and it does involve a quotient. The first thing I recommend is that whenever we have a root of anything is that we rewrite it as x plus 3 over x minus 5. And remember, roots are rational powers, so that would be to the 1 third. Now let's look at how would I write this in different colors so that I know what my inside and my outside is. So I have y equals and I have something being raised to the one-third power. So that's my first, that's my outside part, is I'm raising something to a power. The inside is a quotient of x plus 3 over x minus 5. And so we'll have to eventually take the derivative of that. So let's start taking the derivative. Outside, in. So first, the blue. The blue is a power. We bring the power down front, and we decrease the power by 1. So we're going to do 1 third minus 1, which is the same as 3 thirds. So that gives us negative 2 thirds. And inside, we're going to leave this alone. And that's the biggest mistake people make, is that they are going to want to go ahead and do something to that quotient. But we're getting ready to do something to that quotient over here. Okay, So that's the derivative of the outside. Now we're going to take the derivative of x to plus 3 over x minus 5. So remember that our u is x plus 3, our v is x minus 5, our derivative of u is just 1, and our derivative of v is also 1, which is very nice. So if you look back to the quotient formula, and this is why you have to be expert of that stuff already, remember it's v times the derivative of u minus u times the derivative of v all over v squared. And now we've taken derivative of blue, we've taken the derivative of the red, so we are done in terms of the chain rule. Now we start cleaning up. So first we have a one-third. Here we have a negative power, which tells us to flip things over. So what we really have, so what we really have here is x minus 5 over x plus 3 to the two-thirds. Now over here we have on top um, x minus 5 minus x minus 3 when we get those all cleaned up. 
and so that's going to just give us a negative 8 there. So we have 1 over 3. I'm going to go ahead and write this as x minus 5 to the 2 thirds over x plus 3 to the 2 thirds. And we have a negative 8 on top and an x minus 5 squared. We can do one more step. Let's put the 8 with the 1 third. So we got negative 8 over 3. We have x minus 5 to the 2 thirds here and x minus 5 to the second in the bottom. We also have the x plus 3 to the 2 thirds. And so now we need to clean this up because all we have to do there to clean that up is to subtract the powers. Um, and since there's more in the bottom, the final answer will be in the bottom. So all we're going to have on top is negative 8. On bottom, we're going to have x minus 5. We need to do 2 minus 2 thirds for that. And that's um, 2 is the same as 6 thirds, so that's going to give us 4 thirds in the bottom and x plus 3 to the 2 thirds in the bottom. And so that is the chain rule that involves both a root and a fraction. So that's pretty ugly, um, but it's, it's doable. You just have to be extremely careful with your algebra and getting things cleaned up. So again with the chain rule, remember that you have to work outside in. You take the derivative of one thing at a time, but in the end you had to have taken the derivative of everything. Once you've practiced the chain rule, you'll be ready to go on to the next discussion on finding derivatives using formulas.